<laughs> yeah, man. Welcome back to the Presta John Investigation. We in the Presta Hour at 432 Drop Radio, and I'm back in the book. Searches for an imaginary kingdom, the legend of the kingdom of Presta John. Translated by L. N. Gulenelev, G. U. M. I. L. E. V. And R. E. F. Smith. Let's go. You're on page 160, 164. And, you know, I can't wait to really connect a lot of this in the next installment, part 82 of our Presta John investigation on YouTube as well. So just look out for us. You know, we're being framed. And we're being shaped in battle time. Ahab, the clan battle. Ahab to you. Let's get it here. We popping on. We got that wall. So we're going to connect some things about these quarries. K-H-W-A-R. They call it quara. Quarism. Quarism. Um, you know, I just want to look at what this quarism is all about, but I'm gonna start right here on page 164. In the Karakatan kingdom, matters went from bad to worse. The Gur Khan advances to the quarism Shah Muhammad merely led to the strengthening. Of Khwarizm. By 1208, Muhammad refused to pay tribute, attracted. By 1208, Muhammad refused to pay tribute, attracted the ruler of Khotan to his side and occupied Bukhara and Samarkand. All right, I'm just trying to see, you know, clearly with this one because this is 1208. Now you telling me, because <laughs> we're talking Genghis Khan. Well, let's just keep reading, and then we're going to get back. We're going to go back into the Khwarizm. Let's keep reading. Let's keep reading. So the Muslim population, tormented by the willfulness of the Karakatan grandees and tax collectors, welcomed the Khwarizm men as liberators. So the Muslim population welcomed these Khwarizm men as liberators. Okay. <laughs> okay. Because we're talking about the Khwarizm Shah Muhammad. We're talking 1208. And this might be a real big connection between this Genghis Khan and Muhammad more and more war situation. You know, if we were talking more ish. Or just the confederacy of more ish tribes, you know, the Canaanite tribes, the Moabite tribes, and et cetera, et cetera. Then they would be fitting in on this side of the more and more war, right? This is the same side that, uh, you know, it's confederate against you, right? Confederate against Israel, the Hebrew, the Hebo, the Negro, right? So, yeah. <laughs> If you just now surfing the wave over here, hey, welcome to 432. This might be your first, uh, you know, <laughs> allow why this might be your first uh, look into, you know, the breath and security that we are uh, rocking with. But just surf the wave, man. Belly flop until you become the water. But we're just talking about a more and more war, you know, uh, black on black, right? So on the other side, right, you got Genghis Khan, but. This is a hard hit that Genghis Khan is rocking with this same Muhammad flow, right? <laughs> In the book, uh, Presta John, the Legend and His Sources by Keegan Brewer, Ahab to Aqua Tide for the PDF and the Drop Library at 432 thedropcom Password is 1234 to get through the door. Now, in that book, Presta John, the Legend and His Sources, it breaks down how Genghis Khan is from the tribe of Moab, which is only one letter away from Moab. You know what I mean? So we started looking at that, 
you know, Moabite, Muhammad connection with this Genghis Khan, and more and more, especially when you see the actual, you know, image or painting of this black Genghis Khan, he's just a, a skinny black man, a skinny brother, and, uh, you know, now this is what's happening, so keep that image, not some image that don't look like you, Keep the actual image of this black man, Genghis Khan, this skinny black man. I got to say it like that to break the spell. All right. Skinny black man. All right. So <laughs> now you got Nagas. You got Nagas on both sides of this war, right? You got Nagas on both sides. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you got dragons on both sides of this war. So, you know. We're talking about the sons and daughters of Shem. We're going to get to the Shem connection. Because that's, you know, where we are connected at, right? So, by 1208, Muhammad refused to pay tribute. That sounds a lot like Angus Khan's story of them not wanting to pay tribute to Preston John. So, they rode up on Preston John and had this, had the greatest world war they never talk about. The Muslim population, it says they were tormented by the Kara Katan. The Kara Katan are the black Cathay. Katan, Katan is Cathay, which means pure, right? So we're talking about a land, a people of a pure land. Kara means, you know, copper color, you know, melanated. So we got these melanated people on this pure land called the Kara Cathay or the Kara Katan. The the Khan of the Karakata is Wang Khan, which means Prester John. Wang is king, Khan, priest, right? Wang Khan. Wang Khan is King David in most cases, or at least has a David title. Now, this is a coveted title that Genghis Khan wanted. He wanted that title of a David. He wanted the priestly Khan title, but he wasn't in the lineage for it. He was a covetous knot. He was a black knot, right? So he went up against King David. He went up against the Preston. At the same time, they got 1208 with this Muhammad refusing to pay tribute. To who? The Preston. The Khan of Khans. The Rex Negus. But the Muslim population felt that the tax collection or the tribute that they're paying to the Khan of Khans, Khan Dawi, they don't want to pay David no more tribute. David is the Khan of the world. Khan of all three Indias, my not. They don't want to pay David tribute. So they go to war. Now it says that is, or that was where the troops collected by Cook Look. Cook Look, spelled uh, K U C H L U G. Cook Look. So, this Cook Look among Genghis Khan's former enemies. Whoa. So, it says that's where the troops collected by Cook Look among Genghis Khan's former enemies were needed. But Cook Look embarked. On an adventurous course. Instead of helping his father-in-law. He seized the Gurkhan's treasury in Uzgen. And learning that the greater part of the Karakatan troops were fighting the Muslim. Tried to seize the person of the Gurkhan himself. Gurkhan. Is pretty much like car, car, the same like the car, because they use the G's and the C's and the K's interchangeably. And we're about to see how they use really the the KH's and the H's. So like uh, Kivera, Hevera, Kiver, Is Heber, Is Eber. You know, this is what they do. They'll put a K in front to throw you off. Now you got God is calling something completely, you know what I mean? different than the phonetic silent sounding of it. It's that one letter rule that Horace Butler loved to the bro, you know what I mean? 
was talking about. So, you know, look, man, you know, we just put it together in real time. We in battle time. Hey, out to my Nagas, staying strong in this time. <clears throat> That's why the investigation must continue. You know what I mean? We must continue to search no matter what it takes. Because what we find is going to be for our droplets, you know what I mean, to claim. We're finding their inheritance, and we're not looking at history right now. We're looking at the future. We're looking at your story. Let's go. You got that water. So the Karkatan are fighting the Muslim, right? So this is what we're reading. Just reading it. Clearly it's a more and more war because Kara means black or melanated. So if they're fighting the Muslim, which are also melanated, it's a family war, right? It's a more and more war, right? It's a great on great war. Always fighting for the greatest, you know, land. Always fighting for the greatest territory, right? So... It says the this boldness failed. The Gurkhan was able to collect a force and defeat Cook Lug. And at that time, another Karakatan army took Samarkand. So whoever this Gurkhan is, since we know it's not Genghis Khan, because you know he's in the process of conquering, you know what I'm saying, Preston John's territory at this time. <clears throat> Whoever this Gurkhan pushing them back is, you know, might either be the Preston or someone in relation to the Preston that's pushing back this Cook Lug. So he was defeated. Then they took Summer Khan. And I want to dig on the Summer Khan as well because a lot of history goes into this Summer Khan. Spelled S A M A R K A N D. But the war did not end here. The Muslim again went. On to the attack and were only halted near the ba Balasaga B A L A S A G U N. So I know these are a lot of new names and stuff. Don't get uh, distracted by it or, or feel like we're digging on anything too heavy. These are just titles, all right? So let's just get the story out of it. Let's get the babies out the bath water. But then the mass of people intervened in politics and confused all their rulers' cards. The Muslim population of Mavaranar found the yoke of their co-religious is from Khwarism worse than the yoke of the infidel. Even after several upheavals, all the Khwarism, Khwarizmians and Samarkand were slaughtered. And their disjointed limbs were hung on the bazaars. Wow. On the other hand, the Gurkhan's troops rioted after recovering the treasury from Cook Lug. They did not return it to the ruler, but divided it amongst themselves. Then Cook Lug renewed his adventurous policy, put himself at the head of the rioters, and in 1211 arrested the Gurkhan, who was trying to hide in Kashgar. The Gurkhan was left his title and all the marks of his dignity, but Kuk Lug stood on a level with the throne and matters were decided at the wave of his hand. The Karkatan grandees, seeing the Gurkhan's incapacity, transferred their sympathy to Kuk Lug, seeing him as a possible savior of the sinking state. Gurkhan Julku Julku J U L Q U died in twelve thirteen. <clears throat> so this Gurkhan they're calling Julku J U L Q U. He died in twelve thirteen, and Cook Look was unanimously recognized as the Karakatan Gurkhan. So it's the title of priest king. And by twelve thirteen, if they're fighting over it because the press has already been deposed. They've already, um, you know, removed the Israelite head. You know what I'm saying? Now we have Exilarchs popping off after this point. This is 1202. 
So we related this to Babylonian captivity in the past. We related it to this Nebuchadnezzar uh, being Genghis Khan and putting that history together with chronology. That Genghis Khan is this Nebuchadnezzar that's been written about in the Bible. You know what I'm saying? Connect that with the Shalmanazar drop. You have a connection as well. Um, you know, so all this is happening. They're trying to get this title of this Kara Katan Gurkhan. And again, Kara means black or melanated or copper color. And Katan is Cathay. Where's Cathay? Where's China? Where's Marco Polo's Asia? Where's Marco Polo's China? Where's Cathay? Right? We have it on the maps right here. Cathay, India, Superior, Monaco. So this Kara Katan Gurkhan. Is, the, is ruling the Indies, ruling the Indias. You know what I'm saying? This is the Preston. This is why we talking what we talking. You know, I don't know why other people talking what they talking. And don't let it distract you, you know, when other, you know, folks out of nowhere want to jump and want to talk on Preston John. You know, we, you know, maybe we made it popular. And maybe they feel like they get some type of cloud out of talking Preston John and, you know, trying to, you know, utilize our sources, you know, <laughs> for their own, um, you know, for their own diversion. Because it's not much of an investigation. It's just, you know, a mimic of our flow. So just beware of the mimickers, you know what I'm saying, and the mimicking. Because a lot of it, you know, I mean, if you're on an honest investigation, cool. You know, we always encourage an honest investigation. But for those out there just, you know, making uh, claims and saying, Oh, no, nah, no. Nah. Well, Presta John is Genghis Khan. You know, then who was Genghis Khan at war with in 1202? You know, who was on the David Sausland side? Who was on the Raja Hiraja Chola side? How does this connect with Nebuchadnezzar? Who is this Khan Dawi? You know, who will be raised again in Jeremiah 30? And how does that connect with this everlasting prince or Khan in Ezekiel 37? See, we are rooted. A lot of other folks want to just mention Preston John. Maybe they feel like it's going to attract some type of uh, attention to them. But it just makes you look like fools because you got to be rooted. In the understanding of Khan Dawi in Hosea 3. And if your heart bone ain't into it. If you're just in it for the information, then it's clear you're not here for the vibration. And you ain't got that water. You ain't got that mem song. So beware of the mimicking investigations trying to claim, oh, well, Preston John is Esau. <laughs> Preston John is Genghis Khan. Preston means priest. John is a king. So we have many Preston Johns. We have many priest kings. It's a title. You have one main shepherd. We know Khan Dawi has been, you know, mentioned in prophecy and uh, Jeremiah 30 and Hosea 3, you know. Uh, but, my naga, you know, it's like uh, the Presta title is a very coveted title, especially outside the house. And a lot of the people outside of our house, you know, see that this is a popular investigation now after we've been on it for all these years. And we always encourage others to be on it. Everyone should be seeking, you know, so, you know, by all means, seek, by all means, you know what I'm saying, investigate. But, you know, to do it with a with a heart uh, for the information, you know, or a heart for, you know, really the, you know, destruction of a foundation, you know what I'm saying? You know, many, many device of mimickers are out there. So just be aware of. Who's talking Preston? And if their heart bone ain't in the right place, you know what I'm saying? If they're not in in a true vibration, you know what I mean? In Managi, it's all about the information for them. And, you know, maybe trying to dismantle something or, you know, whatever the case. But we are firm facing and movable in all praise of why we are rooted. You know what I mean? We start with Hosea 3 right there at the root. You know, that one day the children, one day the cons will Kum kum, rise again. Seek our creator directly. So that's the first step to seek and press the John or King David. You got to seek Hawa directly. 
You got to be in code. That's how you see Kawhi directly. Now, after that point, you got that wisdom. You got Ama right there at the entry of your gates. And she's like, boy, you better not be thoughtless. <laughs> you better be in code. These are my ways. These are my laws. You come to me, you find life. That's your mama. That's that man's son. So the Preston John investigation is about you, you know what I mean? And it got to be in code, you know what I mean? So um, that's why they can't duplicate what we do, you know what I'm saying? It's a vibration, not the information. But, you know, it's really uh, amazing, the information that comes out. And, uh, you know, as we see all this stuff happening in Russia, Russia, it makes this topic real hot to talk about Russia, right? Because we're only talking about, you know, the same, uh, the same Indies. Presta is the emperor of all three Indias. That includes that Asia, that includes Russia, right? So you got the same people, the same families holding down, you know, the same, you know, connection, the same energy, the same frequency, the same code. Whether you're talking Byzantium or, you know, certain centuries of the so-called Roman or Romani Empire. You're still talking about Pomegranagas, my nagi. We're still talking Kalelus. So we speak a different language than most on praise of war. And when we see these connections with these Muhammads, we know for sure it's a more and more war. We know that the Presta was, you know, <laughs> whooping up on all these sultans and, and Sejuks, and, you know, all these Turks, right? Because we know who the Turks are. Just recon the general muck muck drop. <laughs> we know that when we talk Turk, we're talking the Moor, right? We're talking the Moorish, right? The great ish. The greatest you can be is in code. So if you ain't talking code keeper, hawa hawa, you can't be talking that great. You can't be talking <laughs> the greater like, you know what I mean? It must be great in your perspective, you know what I mean? But there's only one great. It's only one Hawa. So we're great because we rock with Hawa. That makes us great. So we are the real more because we are more. We are great. <laughs> They're more ish for a reason, my not. This war, there's more and more war been going down, been going up. When they talk about black pride and black unity, my naga, it never happened. It's, it's been tribal war the whole damn time. 700s, 800s, 900s, 1200s, 1300s, 1400s, my naga, and they never stopped. The, the, treaty, the, the treaty of peace and friendship right on Tecumseh's head ball. The treaty right on Dragon Canoe's head ball, right on the Shikamagua's head ball. Man, this war's never stopped, right? Oh, don't mind us for talking about it. Because you didn't tell us about it. You tried to bring us into another black hole. So we think we're Moorish. No, man. We are the more. We are the great. We are the tribes of Hakwa. The tribes of Jacob. And we have returned. We've been seeking our creator most high over everything. We KTC. Now we got that Mamsa. We got that water. Drop Nation got that water. There ain't no science. It's just the truth. There ain't no way to break the spell other than you keeping the code. Now, before we get back to these cars and these cut times, let's take a moment and dig on <laughs> what they call this quarism. And this quarism. 
Quarazm. And <laughs> just looking in the week in the Wikipedia. They have it also connected with this Khanate of Kiva. So it says for the co ex ex or co extensive the co extensive state which preceded it, see Khanate of Kiva. All right. Also called Chorism with a with an X. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> so here we go. This is what they do with the one letter rule. So it could be a K or it could be an X, my not. Like Ka. Hmm. So we're talking she or key, right? <laughs> we say she, like they say sh China, China, you know, is also a k, you know what I mean? So just looking at this quarism, and you know, they have it connected with the Persian and all this stuff that we're talking about, uh, is a large oasis region of the Amu Daru River Delta. So now they have it connected with water. That that water. All right, all right. Let's let's just dig on some carism right quick. This is the Presta out. You got that water. Fourth wave, my naga, and we are popping off. Large oasis on the Amu Darya D A R Y A River Delta in Western Central Asia. But now that we know where Asia is and we know what they would call West is, we're right back to the four corners. But let's go, let's go, <laughs> let's go. Okay, I mean, all right, hold on. So <clears throat> because they're taking me to Khanate of Kiva, I mean, I I would be remiss if I didn't pop off with this Kiva because, you know, it sounds a lot like the Heva people in the cities of Go, right? They spell it K-H-I-V-A. Kiva, we've been saying, is Heva. Heva is Hawa. Because just like the Picto Paleo Hebrew Aleph Bet alphabet. They changed the Wa in Paleo to a Vav V A V or V A H or Va. They're changing the W's to V's. So they go Hey Va instead of Ha Wa to get you out your frequency. Well, we know Hawa. And when we find out that this Kiva is their, their you know, derivative of Hawa, and how they're putting these K's in front, like Kivera is Heber or Heber, I mean, we start to see real clear. So, you know, I went ahead and hit up this Khanate of Kiva on Wiki as well, and It brings us to this. Uh, now it says. Hawa. Hanligi. <laughs> Khanate. Ekive. Kive. So instead of Kiva. They're spelling it Kive. K-H-I-V-E-H. -E right like V. Like W-E-H would be way or Wa. Backseat. We got to trace it back to the Picto Paleo, man, to get the drop. So they also have Kiva spelled with the X, my not. X I V A. X I V A. Well, now we're at like she, like the she or Shiva or Sheba. You know how they venerate Queen Sheba? And they turn her into the goddess of destruction in the Hindu mythology as Shiva. But that's just your ancestor Shiva, who was 
a goddess of destruction to them. Riding out. Um, imagine your queen riding on dragons. You know, <laughs> slaying the hijack. The hijack's going to call her a goddess of destruction. But she's an Israelite queen. So they turn her into this god of destruction or goddess of destruction. Shiva. But they put the XI instead of the KI or KHI. Okay, okay. I mean, we just got little hint hints all over the place. It says this existed wow. in the historical region of Khwarezm in Central Asia from 1511 to 1920. Except for a period of Af Sharid occupation by Nedar Shah between 1740 and 1746. Uh, centered in the irrigation irrigation plains of the lower Amu Darya, south of the Aral Sea, A R A L, with the capital city of Kiva, K H I V A, which is also X I V A. The country was ruled by Turco Mongol tribe. <laughs> Turco Mongol, right? So, which Moors, right? Which one? Turco Mongol, they call it an ethno cultural synthesis. <laughs> wow, like a syncretinized synth synthesizing that arose in Asia during 14th century among the ruling elites of the Golden Horde and the Kagatai Khanate. So, this is well into the Genghis Khan takeover, Batu Khan takeover. So, this is what we're talking about. So, it's saying this Kiva city was ruled by Genghis Khan in it, or his descendants. And when they say Turco, and we know the Moors claim to be the Turks and the Ottomans in the whole situation, we know that this is what we're talking about. The same Moabites, the same, uh, you know, Ammonites, the same uh, Ishmaelites, the same Canaanites, the same situation. You can ride for your tribe, but we are deciphering. You know what I'm saying? And it's everybody's trying to choose up. It ain't us trying to bang on you. We ain't trying to bang on nobody. But it's up for everybody to choose up because there's one creator, man. How how do you want to figure this out? We're trying to tell you to get in code. Keep the commandments. Keep the code. Keep the code. Keep the commandments of Hawaii. Don't go off into no sciences. Not right now. <laughs> keep the code. You got one creator on this earth. You better rock with your frame of shape. We're telling everybody to choose up. We ain't banging on nobody. And we definitely see clearly when the Mongol history is tied into this. Because we weren't even talking that. You know what I'm saying? They're bringing us into that. And they're going into Central Asia. Which means we're talking the Rus. And we're talking Russia. This is the press the out. So this Kiva, now that we know, right, it's being ruled by this Turco Mongol or this Genghis Khan and him, the Conorads, who came from Astraka. <laughs> they sound like outer space. But they're from Astraka. <laughs> I uh, also refer to as the Shah Qatar. Or the Shaka Tarzan, uh, X A C I T A R X A N Kane, was a Tartar state that arose during the breakup of the Golden Horde, Monarch. So this Golden Horde was all during this. Uh, I mean, you you can see some of the drop in Marco Polo that TV series on uh, Netflix. You know, they're they're fighting each other for the Khan. Under Genghis, you know, he's like their, their their Khan father, right? So it went from King David or Preston John. He was Genghis Khan's Khan father. 
which is where they get the Godfather. But we got the Khan father, the priest. Priest King. So no one can measure up now to Changes, you know. <laughs> and their uh and their version of the Khanate. And we're just talking the Khanate of Kiva. So this golden horde split up. They fight amongst each other. Now they got their own Kiva in the district level city. They say it's about 93,000 people there now. The Khariism region called Uzbekistan. According to the archaeological data, the city was established around 1500 years ago. It is the former capital of Khwari. Quarazmia, the Khanate of Kiva. All right, all right. So it was, it covered present western Uzbekistan, southwestern Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan. I mean, so you see, we're talking like the same area as Russia <laughs> so that's what I mean like we can't get out of this Russia and the Mongolese is right into the Russia drop the Russian drop which is why we've been talking about these Russes if you go on our IG you know what I mean up to um, uh, man, what's the fan's name uh, Rashid Rashid uh, Singleton something like that man they love to you man um, had some great drop on you know they had Vladimir Putin and behind him had this this Russian uh, icon, uh, Russian fresco, just letting you know what the priesthood, you know, was looking like, you know, whether they were, um, you know, in their orthodoxy or whatever they were doing or, you know, whatever they're being um, really uh, projected as, because, you know, really, we don't know, you know, we're just getting the projections, you know, but what it looks like is that you had these different sections of knockers you know what i'm saying some are just keeping the code straight up some are going after you know what i'm saying these other pagan you know situations whether we're talking in europe and we're talking america right we got atlantis so um you know we see that right there right there in the script you know what i'm saying uh, after the uh you know days of solomon the kingdom is divided and even during that you got all this idolatry popping off and you know what I mean all that idol idol uh, the harlotry all that stuff we're reading about is happening in America it's happening everywhere so you know this is why Hawaii had to just you know fall back and let us get this work you know, we had to be purged of this wickedness of this uh, craving after other gods man craving after these other powers but at least we get to see what it looks like what Russia looks like what the roots are you know what I mean? That these are our titles. And this is where we're from. Copper color not just found here. We're going to keep the 1828 dictionary rolling, man. You know, y'all said that we can get the app. So we're going to look at the app. But, you know, we'll, we'll find a way to get the definitions. It's all good. But we see what's happening. We see it's a war. It's a frequency war out here. Love to the bro, yo, Seth, the real. So now they're in Uzbekistan southwest of Kazakhstan and much of Turkmenistan before Russian arrival at the second half of the 19th century. 1873 the Khanate of Kiva was much reduced in size and became a Russian protectorate. So all this is Russian drop right so all this Mongol drop is the Rus drop and they tried to create another image of what a Mongol is which only means great one, just like more means great, Mongol means great. More is Mongol. And when you connect that, that more is Mongol, <laughs> and that you are the Mongol, right? And <laughs> you are the great. You are the Rus. You know, this is our chiefhood, our chieftain. This is our Kane. But you've gone a long time without a king. You gone you gone so long you don't you don't understand the order of things. The royalty, the nobility, the beauty, and knowing who you are. 
And being in cold, you got no covetous against your brothers and your neighbors. Because you know who you are. This is why we do the press to investigation. To get the covetous for these other jabronis out of our heart bowl and know who we are. You don't got to covet their stuff no more, my nugget. You got it all. You got what they've been searching for. This book is called Searches for an Imaginary Kingdom. My nugget, they're calling you an imaginary kingdom. They made us imaginary, dog. We imaginary nagas in an imaginary world. Now we're just imaginary nagas in an imaginary world. We're in an imaginary king. I'm sorry, man. You know, drop me popping off. I'm just, you know, imaginary kingdom. Preston John is mythological. Dragons are mythological. You not being on a spinning ball is mythological, right? Come on, my nigga. So they're connecting everything to the roots, to Rusha, to Kiva. They they connected us to the Kane. We're just looking at Quarism. They're connecting us with the Kagata of Kiva, the Kane. Now you dig on that Kiva, right? And it brings us. It says. <laughs> oh man. So we've been talking Kavera for my wave surface. Kavera or Kivera spelled K H E E V I R A. Now they also spelled Kiva Kave. Kiva K H E E V A. So it's almost like Kavera, but it's just Kiva. You know what I mean? Which is just like we're saying, coming right back home. To the Americas, right? So, it says, according to the archaeological data, the city was established around 1500 years ago. It is the former capital of Khwarizmia, the Khanate of Kiva, the Khwarizm People's Soviet Republic. Okay, okay. <laughs> Let's get to the drive. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, boss. The origin of the name Kiva is unknown. Uh-oh. All right. Now they playing with us. Because <laughs> we can see the Hawa in their Kiva. But look how they play with us right in our face bone as we start to make a dismount. The origin of the name Kiva is unknown, but many contradictory stories have been told to explain it. Why would there need to be many contradictory stories? If this wasn't of tremendous importance. Why would there have to be so many stories contradicting each other if this title Kiva and location wasn't of tremendous significance. There are many contradictory stories Wikipedia says about Kiva. I'm just led to it with you, right? We're just digging on Kane, <laughs> Quarism. They brought us to Kiva. Okay, so what is this Kiva? And we're going to get back into the imaginary kingdom of Preston John over here. It says the origin of Kiva is unknown, but many contradictory stories have been told to explain it. A traditional story attributes the name to one of the sons of the prophet Noah. Wow. Oh, wow. Let's talk Hawa, because we're only talking Kiva.
Whoa. So a traditional, a traditional store. So this is what they all know. <laughs> wow. Attributes the name Kiva to one of the sons of the prophet Noah. So Managi, when we talk Mongol and connect it with the great ones and connect the great ones with the Israelites, don't look at us like we crazy. When right here in Wikipedia, <laughs> they're connecting the Kiva of the Kara Katan Katai <laughs> of the Kane. They're connecting all this Mongol flow directly with the sons of Noah. Which goes right into the sons of who? Shem. And this war more and more. It's between the sons of Shem, primarily. <laughs> Who, of course, are treated up all across the board. And yeah, it's war on you. Even when you don't know there's a war on you, it's still called war, my God. You might be a descendant born into it like me, like us. But the frequency won't let us down. And the code got to see it clearly and got a naga popping off. So they got contradictory stories about the origin of the name Kiva. A traditional story attributes this name to one of the sons of Noah. Quote, it is said that Shem, here we go. It is said that Shem. After the flood, he found himself wandering in the desert alone. Having fallen asleep, he dreamt of 300 burning torches. On waking up, he was pleased with his omen. He founded the city with outlines in the form of a ship mapped out according to the placement of the torches about which he had dreamt. Then Shem dug the Kivak well, spelled K-H-E-Y-V-A-K, Kivak. So he dug a well, the water which had a surprising taste. It is possible to see this well in Ikan, Ikan, Kala. So hold up, hold up, y'all going too fast. <laughs> we need that mem song. <laughs> we just talking Kiva and they went crazy. Wow. We just talking Mongols. They bringing us to Kiva. <laughs> Khanate of Kiva. And the Khanate of Kiva connects to one of the sons of Noah. Who, what do we say? Israelites are under who? Shem, right? But so are the Moabites, the Ammonites, you know what I'm saying? So, Shem's descendants. So Shem found himself alone in the desert. He fell asleep, dreaming of 300 torches. He woke up. He was pleased with, you know, whatever this meant. So he founded the city with outlines in the form of the ship mapped out according to the placement of the torches. Now, this has to be significant to the Hebrew today. We just got to put this together, man. What? I'm, I'm leaving it with Drop Nation. 300 torches. He founded the city. So he dreamt of 300 burning torches. Now, we could be lost in translation. We could be 300 dragons you know what i'm saying <laughs> he founded the city with outlines in the form of a ship mapped out according to the placement of the dragons or torches about which he had dreamt then shem dug the kivak well or hevak well or hawak well so now we're talking about that water 
Now we back to the mem, right? The water from which had a surprising taste. How did this water taste? It is possible to see this well, they say, in Icon Kala, which they spelled I C H A N, I Chan, Icon, uh, K A L A. And we're just talking about the Russian Icon. They call it an eternal, or oh, I'm sorry, internal. They call it an internal city or an internal town of Kiva City. And you can even see this, this well, they say today. Now, is it the well? All we know is kind of sounds like Jacob's well, right? I mean, you know that the Arizona flow. Icon Kala is an internal town. What is an internal town, my naga? I'll wait. Internal, like, uh, inner earth? <laughs> Internal, like, tucked in, you know, like, you know, what's an internal town? All right, so this is Kiva, man. It says another story relates that travelers passing through the city upon drinking the excellent water. Whoa, we back to that fountain. We back to that Mimso. Wow. <laughs> so they said because they drunk this excellent water, they would say, K Va. <laughs> K H E Y K K or or Hey or Ha. And then they spell it V A K H. Va. Va. Replace that V with a W. Wa. Replace that K with a hey or ha, ha, wa. So because somebody's drinking that water saying ha, wa. Which they translate to what a pleasure. What a pleasure. Ha, wa. Well, a secure breath is certainly a pleasure. And hence the city became known as Kvak. <laughs> K H E Y V A K H. Where Kiva, or therefore Kiva. So they're saying the name is, the name Kiva came from people saying Keva <laughs> because they drunk the good water. Wow. Lahua. Or is Kiva just named after the creator? Is that simple? Hit the easy button, Brett. In Hindu, Kiva, K H E V A, is equivalent to Shiva. Uh oh. Uh oh, boss. Didn't we just say so? Didn't we just say so? And Shiva is equivalent to Solomon and Sheba. Change the V because the V's are new. Wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> Body bad. So Queen Sheba, Queen Sheba is being venerated. Queen Sheba is being called the goddess of destruction in the Hindu, which is coming later because it's just venerating you. Hawa and Kiva is Kva or Hawa. Ha, hey, take the K off. You just got H E Y, just like the Hey, the fifth letter of Hebrew. Va, V A, V A H, V A K H, same thing. Va, Va is just the sixth letter, which became the Vav, which is originally the Wa. So the K is the Ha, and the Va is the Wa. They say it means what a pleasure. We say, Hawa! Secure breath. 
people were drinking this excellent water and screaming, Hawa! For their secure breath. Now they relate the Kiva with the Shiva. Now you just connected the Mongol flow, the Khanate of Kiva, to the Hindu flow. And what did I tell you? That when you look for you, when you search for Preston John, you're combining major histories into one. This Oriental Mongol flow combines with the Hindu flow, combines with the Biblical Israelite flow, and you combine that for the dismount with the American, so-called Native American, so-called Indian flow. You combine your indigenous history with the Mongol history, with the Hindu history. Managa, you popping off. You combine all that with the Israelite history. The Israelite history, the indigenous history, the Mongol history, the Hindu history, and the Chinese, Japanese. all this combines into super Naga history that they've duplicated to create their own his stories. And it's all about these super Nagas, these super dragons, these Nagas of Nagaville called Israel. We're talking about the chosen seed, the winding dracon that's winding up. They call it Kundalini. I say my dragon's on Kun. Who is Preston John? So we search this quarism. It brings us directly to the Khanate of Kiva. And with Kiva, it goes right into Shim, my nigga. And this Hawa, well, <laughs> you know, that uh, is all about that, man. So. Hawa. In Hindu, Kiva is equivalent to Shiva or Shiva. Interesting, ahead of Shiva with Buddhist remains have also been found kept in the Tashkent Museum. T-A-S-H-K-E-N-T. -E Russian language used in the region for quite long has no equivalent of H. So there's no H equivalent in Russian, and its closest alternative is KH. So that's why they're calling it KH, because there is no H. But if there was an H, they'll just put an H. So this transforms what would be hey, va, H -A -H -E -Y -V -A -H into K -Va K-H-E-Y-V-A-K-H, my naga. So the only reason why we're reading it as k -Vok is because we're reading the Russian because they don't have no equivalent to the English letter H, which comes from the Ha. And this Ha, they translate to hey va like they do in the modern Hebrew. Hey, Vav. And Paleo is Ha, Wa. You got that water? So when my Naga Tao say he come from the Heva, people in the land of Heva, and now we're talking Keva or Hawa. They're trying to put it in Russia over there, in Asia over there, but <laughs> Tao's talking about Heva connected with the cities of gold, right? The the show is called Cities of Gold. We're talking the Americas, right? So this Heva must be connected with the Americas. This Hawa, like Hawaii, all these names are places are named after Hawa and if we didn't know Hawa if we didn't already have that under you know our our arsenal 
of frequency, we this would there's no way that we would connect to Kavok. There's no way we can connect to Heva. We wouldn't even understand without the Paleo Picto. So all praise to why, you know, we we'll be lost in the sauce talking about Kiva Shiva. We wouldn't connect to Shiva. It's because of the dragonfly perspective that our creator has given us that we can see this Russian translation and go right to Hawa. You got that water. So they took us here. So back to the book. <laughs> But the dismount, they're talking about the Muhammad the second of Quarism. And these isms is because they're not the real thing. You gotta dodge these isms, right? Dodge these issues and ism, Judaism or Judah, Quaraism, or the Quara or Hawa. Or we just talking to Kiva or Hawa. We're talking the quarrel or the car. So they got this Muhammad the second, who was the Shah. The Shah is like the their version of the Khan or Zar. You know what I mean? The Shah of the Quarry, Quarismian Empire from twelve hundred to twelve twenty. That's Genghis Khan territory all day. His ancestor was Anub. Tech Jean Garkai Gurkai uh Turkic Kula who eventually became a viceroy of small province of Quarism. He is perhaps best known for inciting the Mongol conquest of the Quarismian Empire, which resulted in the utter destruction of his empire. So he incited the Mongol conquest of Quarismian Empire. And I wonder if that was initially just talking about Hebrews as well. It says the Mongol conquest of Charismia took place between 1219 and 1221 as troops of the Mongol Empire under Genghis Khan invaded the lands of the Quas of the Quarismian Empire. So these initial Quaris why? Wow were invaded by Genghis Khan just like he invaded the Shi or the Almet or Preston John and the Hebrews and Judah and Israel. Wow. We're getting a lot out this quote. <laughs> All you got to do is line up the allies of Genghis Khan and the enemies of Genghis Khan and you see what the original initial more and more war was wow. looking like. Allahua. And the person that incited this Genghis Khan conquest was this Muhammad the <laughs> second. Now, why don't they just say Genghis Khan here? Because he's the Khan, he's the Shah from 1200 to 1220. <laughs> so. This almost looks like a reflection or duplication is Muhammad the second of Genghis Khan. Is Genghis Khan's real name Muhammad the second? Uh oh. I told you, boss, it's a more and more war. We just talking Hawa. Last part is this back to the book. Searches for an imaginary kingdom, the legend of the kingdom of Preston John. Let's go. The events described throw light on the naming problem. As we have seen, the naming fled to the Kar Katan to save themselves from the Mongols. So we're back to this Genghis Khan attack. And these namings were allied with the Kar Katan. That's why they fled there. They said that Genghis Khan, uh, when he fought Preston John, that Preston John 
fled to the Naamans. So there's some correlation between these Naamans and these Hebrews as well. So they regarded them as their fellow tribesmen and were accepted there as such. One tribe, right? Now, Kuk Lug seized power relying on the support of the leaders of the Karkatan troops, which would have been impossible had he been a stranger. Evidently, the difference between the Karkatan and the Naaman lay in political, not the ethnic plane, and this confirms our preliminary interpretation of the events. The religious problem is much more complex according to all the data. Kulug was at first an historian. <laughs> Remember, they try to use that to reference an old king renowned for wise counsel or wisdom. A wise old king would be an historian um, as opposed to a normal, what they would call Christian is not connected to these wise old kings or magi so that's their code word for hebrew you know but they can't say hebrew during this time right because it's too recent they don't want to mess up their chronology so they say nestorian that's a code word for israelite monogamous let's go after seizing power he deserted his wife a christian and fell in love with a car at the time who seduced him into worshiping strange gods, <laughs> perhaps Buddhas. <laughs> so, all right, you can read that two different ways. Was Kug Lug seduced uh, by this car at the time woman? They say strange gods, so to them, Hawa would be a strange god if they're if they're into Zeus, right? <laughs> so. It's all about perspective, about who they're calling worship and strange God. But let's go. Uh, since thanks to the Mongol forces being tied down in China, Kuk Lu gained a breathing space and made use of it to restore the frontiers of the Karakatan power. He managed to force the Khwarezmians in the south to subordinate the defecting principalities of eastern Turkestan except for Ala Malik, which had accepted the protection of the Mongols. But although a good general, Kuk Lu was a bad politician and allowed the Nestorians and Buddhists <laughs> to start a religious persecution of the Muslims. So why is the Buddhists <laughs> persecuting the Muslims? Huh? Why, are the, why are the Nestorians persecuting the Muslims in this time? Maybe it's the same more and more war that's been going down, right? Going all the way up. Who made up the majority of the Karkatai power. The separation, this separated him from the masses who transferred their sympathy to the Mongol Khan. At this time, very well disposed towards the Muslims. In 1218, Kuk Lug, catching the ruler of the Amalek unaware, they seized the town where the ruler's wife, a Mongolian, niece of Genghis Khan, led the defense. The Mongols immediately came to her aid and Kuk Lu was obliged to withdraw. At the first news of the appearance of the Mongol troops, the Muslim population started to slaughter the inheritance of Kuk Lu, who not being able to to consolidate his position, fled to the extreme south of the country, to Serikol, where he was caught by the Mongols and killed. The Kar Katan submitted to the Mongols without resistance and were included in the composition of the people and troops as a separate corps, equal in rights to the truly Mongol sections. And that was the difference, you know what I'm saying, with this with these Mongol Great One Wars is that, you know, uh, once another side became victorious, it wasn't some, you know, sometimes it was slaughtered, you know, but for the most time they respected, you know, they they allowed you to be you, you know, they you still had some protection and all that kind of stuff. Uh, this wasn't like the whole Greek Hellenization period, you know, or the later Roman situation or this American situation. It's a different type of 
uh, mutilization and genocide. They don't. They have no respect for anything, right? But there was still a general respect for the code, even after these wars were fought. You know, so it said that after these Kar Katan submitted, they were included in the composition of the people and the troops as a separate corps equal in rights to the truly Mongol section. So they got equal rights to the truly great ones, to the true, you know, Mongols, which lets you know that it's because, you know, they were truly these, you know, royals, these great ones, these high frequency kinds, you know, that still got respect even after defeat. In 1218, the only remaining enemies of the Mongols or Genghis in the steeps were in Kip Kok, Kip Kip Chop, K I P C H A K. The Eastern Palovsky, who had helped the Merkit, war with them dragged on into 1229 when the Mongols took the town of Saksing on the lower regions of the Volga or Yike. The Palovsky or Polovsky, population of the Caspian and Aral Steeps, in part fled to the west and part submitted to the Mongols and increased the number of their troops. And just on the next page, we'll get this piece with a dismount, man, let you know how wow. serious it is and loud it was. This is Jacques de Vitroy, Bishop of Acre in a letter to Pope Honoristus the third writes still more extensively and pathetically about quote King David. Uh oh. Uh oh. So they're talking about these writings, I mean, in the paragraph before it says it was at this time at this time that the rumor of the Eastern Ally took root in this time in the following form, quote, throughout the Christian world. So here's a here's a source from the 1221. Throughout the Christian world, there were rumors that the Indian King David, my man, <laughs> I can't make this up. So you got document after document about King David in the 1200s, but you're not connecting it because you think King David was in the BCs. And you're not connecting the Israelites because they keep calling them historians and Mongols and Ruses. They're using different terminology like Kiva instead of Hawa. Hawa. Now they just say right on our face bone that this letter to Pope Honorius III writes more extensively about King David who is called by the people priest John priest John and quote like unto David the holy king of Israel this is from 1221 during this mongol flow right this great one flow right During this Nestorian flow. During this Muhammad more and more flow. But you thought you just got dropped off to America from Africa. That's what the grade school, grade uh, school teacher taught us. You just got off a boat. So what do we have to connect to the Mongol or to the more and more situation in America? How would we know Hawa unless Hawa gave us that, that memso? So we see clearly. Man, I can't make this up, man, for the dismount. I mean, even in 1217, it says, at the request of the Caliph, the Nestorian patriarch living in Baghdad sent emissaries to, quote, King David, with the request to mount a diversion against Quarism. 
But this time, Cuck Luke had abandoned his Christian faith and all his, and whatever they're calling Christian, we don't know. That's vague, right? So, dies the hijack. <laughs> all his concerns were focused on Dusgaria, not on Central Asia. So, they're still writing about it in 1217, about a Nestorian, right, connected to an old wise king, patriarch, called King David. Now, we know that Genghis took the title by then, so they could be talking about Genghis. But he stole the title from the original priest king that he wrote up on in 1202, 1203 in India Superior, which is where you live today, my naga. It's all about Jerusalem, man. It's all about the land. It's all about the promised land. Now, they're writing about King David. Even before that, it says throughout the Christian world, there were rumors that the Indian, the Indian, the Indian King David, called Priest John, is approaching with a large force. He has conquered Persia, Media. What does this got to do with the Medes, Babylonian, captivity, exilarchs? And many other Saracen lands. <laughs> like what? <laughs> so King David had the car. King David had the car. The Saracen car. That he wishes. He wishes to wage war against him. And against all heathen. So they're hearing from the Indian King David. <laughs> that he wants all the smoke. He wishes to wage war against all the all the hijacks, all the heathen. <laughs> He's just going in. He is called by the people, priest John, like unto David, the holy king of Israel, crowned by the will of providence. Okay. The date on this letter is April 18, 2021. At that time, Koglug's bones had rotted, but hope of this helped continue to obscure the minds of Europeans. De Vitri, among other stupidities, asserts, uh, so they're just going to call it stupid because he's talking about that real spillionaire. <laughs> he asserts that King David's troops are already no more than 15 days journey from Antioch and hurrying to reach the promised land. To see our Lord Septure. For they're talking Moshe. <laughs> and restore the Holy Land. The Kingdom of Jerusalem. Anaga, you got to get with it or get left on. Oh, man, we're talking Dawi, David in the 13th century. We're talking about the Indian King David. The Indian King David. And where are the Indies? And where is the Indies? It's in the east, not the west. It is the Ophir, Ophir, the cities of gold. And the Christ, they're anointed. They're Christ of Ophir. They're Christopher Colombo. Just found you here. You are the copper colored Nagas found here. Love to the 1828 Noah Webster Dictionary. You're the American. This King David. Priest God, Priest John, <laughs> Priest God, Priest John. They say he was hurrying to reach the promised land, to restore the holy land. Talking Harusha. Baghdad. It says uh, the information underlying the letters have been obtained by the Bishop of Acre from soldiers who had fallen into the hands of Muslims and had sent to the east to Baghdad where the Caliph handed them over to King David and he learned and he learning they were Christians freed them and sent them to Antioch. Oh really? <laughs> so were they Hebrew? Because that's what they like to use interchangeably. Were they Nestorians? Were they of his tribe? 
And at this time, which King David are we talking about? Preston John or Genghis Khan? Genghis Khan. So, you know, you can't call you can't call Preston John Genghis Khan when you understand the more and more war. <laughs> if uh, Preston John is Genghis Khan, then who the hell is Genghis Khan at war against? Who is the Wong Khan of the Karakata? Who is Kandawi? And who is Preston John? <laughs> hey, we're talking priest king. And in this journey, we connect, you know, not only to the Davids, but, you know, to all the priest kings of our, you know, inheritance of our of our lineage, of our heritage, as well as our queens, you know what I'm saying? All these queen mamas, you know, big mamas, you know what I'm saying? Lady dragons on the wall. And that's what our Preston John Priest King, you know, it's really the investigation, Managa, of, you know, the backbone, the spine, you know what I'm saying, that they tried to completely devour and separate, you know, so you can't walk no more, so you can't fly no more. We're putting our spine bone back together so we can stand up straight as the nobles, as the royals, as the house of Hashirah. Ahab to the Khans and the entire Khan dynasty all across our plane of existence, which is our Hawa and the Wada for tuning in to another flow of the Preston out. Allah Hawa. Yeah, man.